Welcome to another episode of Little Talks, your weekly dose of marketing news and insights from Littlefield Agency. You like this music, Brian? It's pretty good. Who's this? Sam Littlefield. I recorded it myself. Yeah. This is your song? No. (laughs) Playing around. (laughs) It's about to be so impressed. (laughs) Roop and I actually, this is a fun fact before we dive in here. Roop and I went back and forth on our intro and outro music. But but wait, tell me where my music did come from. Who made my music? I don't, I don't remember. You actually made that? Yes. I what? Made, yes, I made it in GarageBand. Okay, I can't tell if you're lying. No, no you I'm telling not. the truth. Means, I can tell <laughs> I'm telling the truth. truth. Stop they lying to me. I 100% did. Oh, my goodness. And so you're like, no, I like the stock music I found. I was like, God, oh, man. All oh, right. Wow, I feel really bad. You should. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> should feel terrible right now. Yeah, right. Boy, I'm glad I'm not you. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Well, on that note, welcome back to another edition of Little Talks with Littlefield Agency. I am Sam Littlefield. We have... Roop. And we have Brian. Brian Pappas. And we are just. Can we? Nice. We got Claudia as a producer, too. She's doing great. Um, Or what is her official title? I don't know. (laughs) Inbound. uh, No, no, no. no, no. I'm saying for for this. Associate producer. Associate producer. Associate producer. You're on your way to producer. Brian, welcome. It is so good to have you here. Um, Brian is our first official outside agency guest in the new podcast space. That's a really long. Um, That's way quite to get the title. Yeah. I'm gonna put that on my <laughs> resume. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> resume worthy for sure. <laughs> Which is fun that Brian gets to see. Uh, you know, you guys don't get to see this because you're seeing us. But the setup here, uh, we're trying to prove to Brian that we are somewhat legitimate. I believe it. This is really cool. I, I love being a part of this, and thank you very much for having me on the show. Brian and you. I go way back. Um, <laughs> we've known each other for years now. So, uh, Brian, first off, before we give your kind of official intro. Brian lives in Dallas. What in the world are you doing here in Tulsa today? I don't know. Um, so you just wake up and you're here? Uh, pretty much. I, I just drive aimlessly <laughs> around too. the country. Today I'm in Tulsa. Uh, but my brother has a birthday this weekend that we're celebrating. So I'm on my way to my hometown, Wichita, Kansas, and we're celebrating my brother's birthday. And Tulsa is pretty on the way, I would say. So I tripped and I fell in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we we used to have we used to celebrate birthdays and we had sound effects for it and everything. Brandon, do we still sound have birthdays? Oh. What's your brother's name? David. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, David. David. Happy birthday, David. Happy birthday, David. Happy birthday. Woo. We are giving David a shout out. What number is it for David? It is thirty six. Thirty six. He's young. Ooh, okay. Man, thirty six. That well, is wonderful. Do you remember thirty six, so. Rube? That was about Just, 20 years ago, right? Like a few years ago, yeah. <laughs> not, not that far back. Uh, David, happy birthday. Brian, it's so good to have you here. So uh, he literally is making a pit stop. He reached out to me uh, about a week and a half ago mm-hmm. and said, I am on my way. I would love to stop by, and I would love to podcast. Brian actually has podcasted before. Um, he's done some virtual visits. This is his first in-person visit. So as you can already tell, he is a natural Um, And we are so excited to have you here. Thank you for lying. So, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, thanks for that nudge under the table. (laughs) Um, Brian and myself and Roop, we all know each other because Brian used to work for what was originally Southwest Media Group. It then, uh, they kind of threw some mergers and acquisitions. You guys became Mm -hmm. Mindstream Media Group. They were our media partner for 10 years. Um, When digital hit in the early 2010s, uh, we decided to make that partnership at the time, which was awesome. We got to know Brian. He was on the paid search team, and Brian would come up here probably on a quarterly basis uh, for Digital Analytics, Grasshopper Analytics. Yeah, and he just has always meshed well with our people. Literally, you should have seen Reynolds Wallace running in here <laughs> and basically tackled Brian. Has I, even left Brian notes on his script. She yeah. has. I adore Reynolds <laughs> yeah. so much. I missed. I missed all you guys. So, uh, anywho, Brian, you um, left Mindstream about. Two to three years ago? Yeah, I'd say about three years ago now. It was a sad day for us. Uh, Sean Hubbard was a huge fan of yours, I remember. I think he may have even shed a tear. <laughs> You're kidding. You're making that up. I, that was a lie. But uh, no, Thank but you. That made does. me feel good <laughs> for a few <laughs> seconds. Now I feel worse, but thank you. Um, we love Brian here on the account, uh, on the multiple accounts he touched. Brian provides a level of insight in the paid search world that is phenomenal. And uh, he is currently the director of paid search for a very great agency called Maroc Agency uh, down in Dallas. Yeah, they're fantastic. And so uh, walk us through this new role. You've been there for about a year and a half. Year and a half. You're nearing the two-year mark. And 
Um, talk to us about the clients you touch, your team, and uh, kind of a day in the life of Brian Pappas. Yeah, absolutely. So Morocco's kind of bread and butter is we're really a hyper-local agency, meaning okay. we work directly with franchisees and co-ops. Um, so we do a lot of hyper-localized media. Um, although we do work with um, some clients on a national level, Chuck E. Cheese being one of them. Nice. I love Chuck E. Cheese. They're such a fun client. What to do you think with. of the pizza? Well, he's highly his- improved. They improved the okay, formula. I, they updated the formula. Enough. They have pizza uh, for adults. Don't now. They, serve they have beer, beer and liquor now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They have salad bars. You've They're- been there recently, huh? Well, I keep tabs on these things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe an agency outing to Chuck E. Cheese is in order, Sam. Oh, that sounds amazing. You okay. should. They're, you They're fantastic. But, um, but you're loving the account, the client. I, I love it. I, I love it. We work with McDonald's, Planet Fitness, nice. Honda, Midas, just to name a few. Um, like the, really, Midas, the Midas Touch. Yes. Yeah. The Golden Touch. That is amazing. Um, so just a really great roster, a lot of variety which makes my day-to-day uh, very involved, but <laughs> certainly I, it's director, never boring. Even It's director. never boring. So even as the director of paid search, you're pretty dang involved. Very involved. How many people are a part of your team? So we're up to about 10 wow. at this point. And you're so managing those people. Again, yeah, I oversee the paid search department. So paid search, that umbrella is different in every single agency. So it's kind of frustrating that there aren't any common definitions for it, but that essentially encompasses all media from Google, all media from Microsoft, and then a few vendors like Yelp. Okay, Hmm. nice. And this has been, so from day one, when we met Brian in the SMG, MMG days, as we called them, you've always had a love for paid search. You were, I mean, and it's not like Brian's reporting. Brian brought, and I think it's why you endeared yourself to Sean Hubbard is you brought a passion for something that a lot of people don't really get passionate about. So where did that love come from and and how did you end up to where you are today? So that's really interesting. That's not actually true. I hated paid search (laughs) when I first started. So it it took a couple of years and and like, I I think the reason that I hated it. You're a yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> I, I've touched digital media. I've been doing this for about 10 years now. I've done SEO. I've done social media, CRO, LPO. I've done website tagging. But primarily, most of my career, career has been spent in SEM. Um, but my first couple of years, I didn't really understand what I was doing. And I think it because I didn't get what yep. I was. I felt stupid. So I... I didn't like what I was doing. And then when I started working with some more prominent clients and getting some training and, and, you know, actually taking it upon myself to actually learn what I was doing, once I started understanding it, then I really started loving it. And I thought it was the coolest thing in the world when I started my career and I was working with Half Price Books and Smoothie King and I'd go watch a Rangers game or I, I'd just be driving and I see a billboard for them. And I know like I work in paid search, I didn't make the billboard, but like just to see like, that's my client, that's my client. I love that. And I, I've always been a nerd. I, I've always been a huge nerd. I know that's a shock, but I love, <laughs> I love math. I love math, I love data. And I love that you can quantify the value that you're bringing to the client. So I I feel like that's where a lot of my passion comes from. It's not some pie in the sky. Um, Well, I feel like my media is working pretty well. It's direct. Here's what we've done for your business. And it's, it's a really cool opportunity to be able to point to those numbers that you directly put together strategy to achieve Super that. Super cool. And you're a heck of a BSer. You had me fooled. That's right. I'm an actor. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're going to hit on that in a little bit. He is an, he is an actor. Um, wow. That's remarkable. Also kudos to you for getting the job originally. I, I, I was coming out of college and I had a, a, a friend um, who we, we both graduated as marketing majors. We graduated from the University of Texas at Dallas. And mm-hmm. so, you know, we had a major brother. that was relevant to the job. Of course. But he helped get me in the door. And it was totally an entry level job. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so that's that's where I started learning nice. the ropes and wasn't the biggest fan of it. But that is where I got my start. <laughs> and I'm very thankful that, for that opportunity. Obviously, years, years later, here you are. Changed the course of my life. And that's amazing. Yeah. 
And also, I appreciate your candor. Yeah. The yeah. transparency is a good thing. You just yeah. said I was a BSer. <laughs> and an actor. <laughs> and an actor. <laughs> and an actor. <laughs> and that's why we love you. So talk to us. You know, a big, uh, Roop and I covered it probably a month or a month and a half ago. This cookie-less future that we're about to live in, um, you know, what does that do to your day-to-day? Are you, you know, some of the world is now cookie-less come July of this year. Mm-hmm. We are in that cookie-less quote-unquote future. Um, what are your thoughts on that? How has that affected just everything that you do and, and your team and your clients? Yeah, absolutely. So I spend most of my days running in circles and screaming. Um, <laughs> so just to kind of recap where we are in, in that cookie-less future, and apologies if you've already no, 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 covered please. this no, on yeah. previous it's a, episodes. It's a good reminder for our listeners. But it, essentially what's happening right now is cookies have been deprecated for 1% yes. of Chrome users. That was as of... January, January. Mm-hmm. of this year. Um, so that's 30 million users worldwide. And, but do, and do we know, has that number changed since January? Is there kind of inching? I, I haven't heard any no updates. No updates, yeah. One percent is the last okay. I've heard. One percent is bad enough know. for now. But, but, right. but that, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's I mean, just 30 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, but <laughs> Acting. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but that was essentially Google's way of dipping their toe in the water. And as you alluded to, Sam, right now there's some complaints from the UK that may potentially delay cookie deprecation. It, it was originally scheduled to be deprecated, all cookies deprecated in 2020. So it's literally been That's delayed right. That's right. by four years. Um, but Google is still saying we are going to deprecate all cookies. And again, that's just Chrome. You know, Firefox, other browsers, they've already gotten rid of cookies, but the majority of internet users use Chrome. Um, So as of July, we are expecting that all cookies are going to be gone. So once that happens, and you know, there's already been a lot of privacy laws enacted. Mm -hmm. We have all the iOS updates that's already, we're we're kind of getting glimpses of that future and have been for years at this point, but there's really three main things, challenges to look out for. Number one, it's going to be harder to measure conversions. We are going to miss measuring some conversions. We'll likely see a small drop off from that. Number two, attributing how those conversions are credited to different channels will be significantly more difficult. And three, third-party audience targeting is just not going to be as effective as it has been historically, and that increases the importance of needing clean, privacy-safe first-party data. Amen to that. I think that's what we said. Is that what we said? That was was, was very very spot on. And I don't know, just... So Roop's role has evolved since you were last here at the agency, and uh, he is Mr. First Party Data himself. Yeah, I we we I head up the CRM group here. That's right. So yeah, we talk a lot about yeah cookies going away is sad, but there is an option we know right now that can help kind of put the salve on that. That's get your first party data in order and start collecting that. Like if honestly, if you haven't already been doing that, like you're kind of way behind. (laughs) But now you're really going to be behind. If there are a lot of people, especially in the B two B world, that are behind on that, and and especially good clean data. To your point, Brian. Yeah, it's not just not just first first party is not just kind of to us not just a a solution to the cookie cookieless problem coming forward or an option to to help with that, but yeah, it's better data overall. Yeah, it's, and it's a no brainer. You kind of alluded to this, but I think that's kind of a silver lining that it's forcing companies to now take care of some of these very important priorities <laughs> that should have been done regardless of this from day one cookie yeah. dystopia yeah. that we're sure. about to find ourselves For in. Sure. Cookie dystopia, I love that. Cookie dystopia, I, I can't combine no, the words. No, I, very I think well. that's great. Cookie stopia, there C- we go. Cookie stopia. Sounds like a movie that only like nerds like us would care about. Right? <laughs> It'd be a great movie though. We should pitch that. <laughs> yeah, we should actually. Really Brandon, idea. you want to script that for or us? Maybe a quick, uh, <laughs> he says yes. Yeah, I was say he's, he's a filmmaker. Full on. He, Thank he you, can, Brandon. He can pull that. Thank you. So okay, that's very interesting. In that realm, um, you have all the conversation of all things AI, right? Gen AI, and. Uh, does it freak you out in your role in the world of paid search, the future of search, right? Like does just in how people are using Gen AI and how much the rate of change and adoption over the last, what, 16 months, 14 months? What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I, I mean, beyond- it's, it's early. Beyond, well, yeah, it, it is. And that's part of what scares me. Just the technology that's available. Have, have you seen OpenAI's Sora Mm-mm. yet? 
Is so, this the, is this the uh, video deal? Text to video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's creepy. So it, it's a text to video prompt, and it can create up to one minute long videos. Yeah. And for now. Know, for yeah. now. For now. <laughs> for now. Exactly. It's about to probably start creating movies. Cookietopia. Uh, <laughs> Coming soon. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. You know, it still has some of the issues of multiple you know, fingers. Uh, exactly weird that stuff that kind of thing. Yeah. The same thing that you're still seeing in static images, but there is uh, one video that they had on you know their primary website for it that was just a woman walking. I think it was through China, and it was oh, very the dynamic. Rain, right? It was kind of like a wet uh, surface. Yes, yeah. yes, and the level of detail. And, you know, you can still kind of tell there's hmm. something off about it. But again, we're in 2024. What that What's that going to look like in 2030, 2040? That's the thing that was off in it, the reason I mentioned the wet floor, I saw a report on this, and it looks real. Like you're, <laughs> It looks really it good. But they're showing ways you can kind of look for things that are off. And sometimes the reflection of her in the water she's walking on is a little off. And the way she would move her feet, there's a couple times where her foot actually crosses on the left side, her right oh, foot and left foot switch. But it's so fast you don't notice it. Um, so it's getting better. I mean, the whole thing about... 20 fingers on a hand is our joke for a long time, right? <laughs> on, on image creation, that's even getting better. It's just, it's just time. So like the, the race to what's going to happen to search when these kinds of things are moving this quickly is like, we're like, oh, is it going to be the next few years? It might be the next few weeks. There, I mean, was, there was a very preliminary study because um, there is an open beta uh, open for the Gen AI experience in Google. I think it's integrating BARD or it's mm -hmm. been rebranded to Gemini, Gemini now. now yeah. um, but they, they basically, you know, conducted thousands and thousands of searches. So, you know, take the results with a grain of salt, but their biggest conclusion was SEO results, organic results were pushed way down. So I, I think... It's going to increase the importance of paid media. Google wants you to spend money. Yep. And I think it's going to completely overhaul how SEO functions on the back end and, and you know, quality score for search. Same thing for paid search. I, I think, you know, in terms mm. of how we're optimizing our websites, title tags, all of that, I, I think that's going to have to change with these more conversational kinds of approaches in Google that are trying to kind of reflect TikTok because that's what Gen Z is using as a search engine right now. So, so Brian, do you kind of it's see on the it money, as, man. you know, organic SEO optimization is like basically always preparing your content for Google. I mean, they're the game, <laughs> right? So we'll just say it, Google. Do you kind of see a future where content preparation is adjusted in some ways to be digested by uh, Gen AI bots? Because, like, to me, th they're still needing that content, right, to create their, formulate their responses yep. and, and do those things. So, like, they're kind of a super search engine that I just don't yet know what I need to tell it or what, how I need to present my, my content to get it to show up in those results. But that's, that's a really interesting question. And, and you know, no one knows right. what it's going to look yeah. at. I, I think a lot of people have compared the current situation of Gen AI to um, the early stages of the internet, yeah. where it, it's affecting society, it's affecting everything in the economy, and it is going to replace some jobs, mm -hmm. but we pivot as a society, we mm -hmm. always do, yep. um, and we can't you know, cover our ears and bury our heads in the sand just because we don't like it. So to come back to your question, I think, yes, in some way, shape, or form, absolutely, we're going to have to figure out, because Google, I mean, organic content now, they love gatekeeping what yeah, the we, actual... We, we know like 12 of the 400 things in the formula, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly. And we know so it's going to be a similar million. situation. And for AI, we know zero out of the 5 billion, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah. That's a great point, Brian. That uh, really is. So speaking of AI, we have a fun fact about Brian Pappas. Hey, I love this it. This associate producer this is, is on so it with good. the soundboard. She's so good. Crushing it. On this it. is her second week. So this is her, yeah, and her first time actually running the board. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Way to go, Claudia. <laughs> Clapping for herself. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. So uh, Brian is not only just amazing in the paid search realm, uh, how many years has it been in the VO realm? In the voiceover realm, I've been doing this since, uh, professionally since 2019. So it's it's been about four, four and a half years now. So it was, it was right in line when we were 
really getting to know Brian well. And uh, he took this, I don't want to call it a leap of faith, but you went out there and you put yourself out there and you tried something new. And you were, what I love about Brian is he was so transparent on LinkedIn and how he approached this and what he was trying to do. And um, it's been really cool to see you evolve over the years. Um, but in this world of artificial intelligence and the future of the voiceover business, because I know you have a major passion for this, give us your thoughts there. You know, is it to your point about replacing? Is it going to replace humans? I hope not. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think if I could summarize my overall thoughts about AI is that AI is meant to replace human tedium. AI is not meant to replace human ingenuity. Mm. And I, I think a lot of people have concerns that the latter will occur. And I certainly share that vantage point. So to give an example of the former, um, I, don't, I don't need or want anyone on my team spending three hours stitching together a pivot table in Excel. I don't want my team spending hours building campaigns and swapping creative and setting budgets. Like these are things that we're actively looking for solutions to. Great. Every company Great. is yeah, looking absolutely. for to, to find those efficiencies. So um, e even in the creative realm, I, I won't pretend to remember all the details, but there is a clip about the recent Into the Spider-Verse movie, how they used AI hmm. to really um, cut down on the corners of a lot of the tedium that it takes to animate the lines of the main character's face. Um, so it wasn't replacing the animators, it was just making their jobs more efficient and taking out the crappy aspects of their job. So I, I think that's a really good example of eliminating that tedium for humanity. Personally speaking, I'm very, I'm very biased as a voice actor, but I, I have major concerns. Like the whole SAG after strike, I'm not personally in SAG after, but I've got a lot of friends <laughs> in there. AI was a huge component of that. It was mostly AI and streaming. Totally. Um, but it's all Can cancel the cookie. Get in movie. I, yeah, yeah. Now. Sorry, that was hypocritical. Of me. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Let, let's, Stop let's it. cut that, Brandon. Stop Thank that. you. <laughs> um, but like, I'll, I'll give you a, a personal example, and this is probably me just being paranoid, but um, a lot of my voice acting friends have a lot of success on TikTok. I'm personally not on TikTok because in the terms of service, they say they can take your biometric data and they define your biometric data by saying that's your face print and that's your vocal print. So this is, probably an unrealistic hypothetical, but hypothetically speaking, in five years, if I were on TikTok, because I signed up and I have to agree yeah. to the terms of service <laughs> to be on the platform, then you know, I could become a big voice actor and they have the legal right to create an AI replica of my voice Holy and cow. use it <laughs> however they want. Uh, Voices.com, one of the biggest online voices, uh, voice acting websites in the world, they updated their terms of service last year, basically saying the same thing, that anyone that's on the platform, they have the right to use their voice to train oh, AI. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think really anyone, humanity as a whole, is, is really looking for that. And, and you know, it, it may be that technology gets to the point where we don't have a choice. Again, we can't cover our ears and bury our heads, but I, I think there are certain aspects about where the technology is progressing, uh, progressing on the human ingenuity side that we do need to push back on. I gotta give you kudos for the fact that you're reading the terms of service. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not. That that was pointed out to me. <laughs> I don't read Sam. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. I, I I mean, seriously, that's amazing. And it's amazing for you to just have that that thought process because it is. It, and it's like you said, we can't control technology. It's going to be. Um, and, and here in a second, we've got to hear some some of Brian's favorite kind of go to vo's. But uh, but we we get it, man. We re we respect what you do. Um, we've we've kind of tapped into some AI via work, just in the sense of experimenting. We still have our people that we use for um, some significant client of ours. But I was really, as we were putting this script together, it's just really interesting to see. You know, should you be here on your way up to Wichita a year from now for David's thirty seventh birthday? <laughs> you know, what what are our thoughts and where the where is the world at that point? So uh, yeah. with with that, 
we got to hear some VO. Yes. Are you comfortable with that? I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with okay. that. Um, so probably my, my favorite thing I've ever done, um, I, I got to record for episodes 997 to 1,000 of One Piece. And if you're not familiar, One Piece is an anime. If you're not familiar with an anime, that's essentially a Japanese cartoon. They made a live action Netflix series off of it. Um, but it's one of the biggest animes in the world. Um, it's very, very popular. And, you know, it, it was small background rule stuff um, that I had, you know, a couple lines in in every single episode. But what was so fun about the recording is, uh, you know, like the show itself recognized that it was counting down to episode 1,000. So by the time they got to episode 1,000, there are all these huge bombastic fight scenes. So every single time there's a crowd of individuals that, you know, people are getting blown up, me and a couple of other guys are voicing that. So it, this was about a two and a half hour recording session and the first half was literally just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> screaming in, in, in English or Japanese uh, in English. Okay. So, um, crunchy roll is, is yeah. basically the, um, the, the, the main company that dubs anime and they are headquartered in Coppell, which mm. is, you know, 20, 30 minutes away from where I live. Um, so that's, that's where I go to in studio to record for that. Um, but it's a two and a half hour session. And when, when you die in an anime, they make you scream like you're actually dying. And so these groups of, uh, you know, bad guys just got, they got blown up, they got stabbed, they got electrocuted. So you, you have to like actually replicate that. And so we're screaming at the top of our lungs. And, and you know, this is episode 1000, yeah. so it is pretty historic. So they wanna make sure they get it right, which I, I appreciate the hell out of that. Or, or those directors are amazing. Uh, but we're screaming at the top of her lungs. They're going, no, no, that I need more. You need to scream louder. Brandon, get ready to mute my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that first, and then we recorded our individual lines. So, you know, I, I'm all of these different minions, henchmen. I'm, I'm some snail phone. Like, I'm, I'm literally a snail that acts as a phone. Can you give us an example? <laughs> I, I hope Brandon lowered your volume. Oh, so uh, someone good. did. Thank you. Someone did. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, th so that's one example. So, I, th I think we recorded that on a Wednesday, and then an, I I roll into work Thursday and go, "Hey guys, how's it going? It's great to see you." Mm. So, uh, but, but it was really cool. You know, there was a world premiere of, of episode 1000 oh in LA. Gosh. I wasn't able to make it, but uh, you know, to say that I was a small part of anime history um, was like, it, it means the world to me. Like that, that was the show that was on when I was a kid. Wow. So just being, being able to be a small part of that is just so cool. And, and again, the, you called this out, Sam, but I'm, I'm such an introvert and I've always been a very risk averse person. And so like how I got started, I, I just off of a whim mm. started taking voice acting lessons. This was 2018, you know, around the time yeah. that we were working together. And you know, I, I, by that point, I liked what I did, digital marketing on a daily basis, but I really missed mm. that creative outlet so kind of off of a whim, I started taking lessons at the school called Voices Carry. Um, they're, they're also based in Dallas. Um, so I, I took classes there for about a year and uh, I, I was just having so much fun. And, and I kind of said to myself, you know what? If I crash and burn trying to do this, I'm cool with that, hmm. but I don't want to wake up and, and be you know 70 one day and wonder, Gosh, what would have happened if I had just tried? So um, I, I think that's really good advice to anyone out there that has dreams and passions that they want to chase after is just try. You know, it may not work out for you, but if you try, it, it can open up some really, really special doors. It certainly did for me. And, and if like, you know, in digital marketing, if you first hate it, 
you, you kind of never know. Stick with it Stick for with at least it. three years. <laughs> dreams can. Well, you know. Brian, I remember as you've started this endeavor and we were working with you, you know, the acoustics are really important when Brian is recording. And so Brian would tell us how he would be in his apartment and would literally <laughs> go into his closet. And I, I vividly remember you telling us that, and you were just, you just you set such a good picture, just like you did with this, you know, and, and how you're recording. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had, had to soundproof the place. But what I love about the fact that you just brought up, it's what we talked about last week, right? You've never started a podcast, go start a podcast. You've never done VO, go do VO if you want to do whatever it is. Um, you know, Phil Knight and Nike were kind of onto something with that, just do it. <laughs> Damn, they're smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I think it's great. And obviously, like, just as you were taking off during that time and um, and starting that passion of yours, it has really been very neat to watch this through. And Brian, if you don't follow Brian on LinkedIn, uh, Brian, P-A-P-P-A-S, Pappas is his name. He spells Brian, B-R-I-A-N. I do. Thank you. Uh, not brain. We will not call brain. Me brain. We'll tag him and in not the LinkedIn Brian post. with a Y. We'll tag yeah. him with LinkedIn posts. He is absolutely worth a follow and all things paid search and everything that he believes in with VO. Um, and then he's just, he's, I, you're a very, you're a, uh, What's Dos Equis, the most interesting man in the world? <laughs> you're a very interesting man. I was going to say really cool guy, but that's also appropriate. Most yeah, interesting no, man. Totally. In the, yeah, totally. Um, so, Brian, as you continue making your way north, we want to thank you, seriously, for taking the time. Uh, this has been entertaining and great. We'll say thank you, Brian. This has been an absolute pleasure. And thank you so much for having me on the show. And We look forward to seeing you every year this time. Uh, Absolutely. One thousand percent. And, David, happy birthday. Yeah. Absolutely. We will see you happy guys. Birthday, David. Next week, Brian, safe travels. Until next time, you are welcome here anytime. Thank you so much. Okay. Great we'll time. see you all. Adios. See you next week. And that's a wrap. We hope you've enjoyed our little chat and found ways to grow your own marketing strategies. Remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow us on social media at Littlefield Agency.